Hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle with a note on how to forecast local winds, very local winds, and like I'm talking about Elliott Bay and Puget Sound here, uh, potentially for use in a race, uh, using uh, a meteogram. And we have here, luckily, the uh, high-resolution uh, wharf model from UW, and we can use it. And um, this method just occurred to me, and it seems to work pretty well. I have to test it in the real world, but the principle looks good. And then we can go on and try this with other high-res uh, regional models. But anyway, so here is, this is a link to a uh, Wharf GFS on-the-fly mediogram generator from UW. Now these are intensive uh, computations and they warn you right down here that it takes a while to do these computations. But, so here's how you would set it up. This, I take the latest run, which is uh, uh, today 8, 6, 12 Zulu, that's 5 a.m. this morning. And then uh, this is their highest resolution, 1.3 kilometers. And uh, so then, the, and I've done three cases, and they take a while to compute, so I'm not going to do them all. But the way you do it is, let's, I'm going to compare the winds, for example, here, here, and here. Three sides of the sound that might be involved in a race going up and down here. And there's all sorts of ways to extend this and play with it. It takes a while, but... Uh, you do this the night before even. So you start here and you pick a point. Let's say I pick a point right there. So that's the one I'm going to call to the right. Now when I did this, it dropped some other elevation in here, down in the s deep in the, on the bottom. Oh, I know what. They're grabbing this off of Google Earth. That's the depth of the water probably. So anyway, I'm changing that to zero right there. And then you say create the mediogram. And that Oh, actually, I'm going to shut down an old one. I'm going to do it again. Uh, create the mediogram. Okay, so that pops up a blank screen like this. And it takes about, oh, 60 seconds or 90 seconds or something to calculate the result. And so that's running. Then I just move that out of the side. Then you do the same thing. You come over here, clear the markers, and drop one right there, say. And you do this, oop, again, it's got the depth of the water, uh, zero. And then you run that one again. And then you come over here and do it again. Or you could do it like if you have a race out, there's more, actually, there's more races out here than down there. So you could look at here, here, you could look at four points across here and look at the winds. Now, the other thing that kind of is bad here, okay, let me show the data and show why it's not such a, not the best example. Here's what these are going to look like when they come back. This is the data that comes back. And these are the three sides of the sound. So these are mediograms. So up here is a temperature and a dew point at two meters. That, by the way, shows this is 5 a.m. I see that's a 12 Zulu. I forgot to fix this here. But anyway, on this one, this is 5 a.m. And so this is 5 p.m. So one thing we see interesting is that the, the temperature peaks here. It peaks about 5. This is 5 a.m. This is going to be 12. That's 5 p.m. Then back to 5 a.m., 5 p.m. So you see what happens. The temperature builds during the day, and the wind builds during the day to the peak wind around 5 o'clock. Here is now... That's uh, 9 hours plus 9 5 is 14. That's like 2 o'clock. Oh, by the way, this came back. That's how long it took. So this one came back, and this is, and this is what it's showing. Well, let me, I can just look at this one. Ah, 2 meters. That's interesting. Anyway, so this was this morning. Now, in fact, we had fog this morning. You could, it was fog. There's now fog and smoke, of course. So we got a lot of smoke going on right now. So this is, uh, we actually had, here's like 5 degrees, 4, oh, 65, 3 degrees difference in the temperature between the dew point and the temperature. But we had indeed good fog this morning. Now, it was real fog. There was smoke back there. Now you look out the window and you see haze. It's all smoke. But this morning it was fog. Now, and then it builds up. But look at this. It says tomorrow morning. That's like 24 this time here tomorrow. Or here. This calls for a couple of days. It's like really foggy. Really foggy period here. 
So anyway, we can see what happens with that. But, uh, but that's not what we're looking at right now. We're not looking at fog. We're looking at wind. Now, here's the other kind of sad part. Right now, we don't have much wind at all because we've got the smoke and it's just not very windy. But it doesn't stop us from analyzing the principle of the process. And so all we're caring about here are, is this one right here. We don't care about the sea level pressure and humidity and the rain and all of that. Ah, look, a little rain coming in here 51 hours after 5 a.m. this morning. Uh, but we care about just this one. So what I've done is I've just cut these three out, these three right here, because if you're studying your tactics about what side of the route might be best, you have a lot of ways to look at this. We have high resolution, uh, the CONUS NDFD data. We got the HRR R data, a lot of models to look at, but the w, but the UW UW Wharf model is also a very good one, maybe the best for this area. Anyway, so this is what this looks like, and again, we don't have much wind, but we have wind speed and wind direction. So I'm going to set that aside, and you see all how long it takes. And then these are the three that I got for the three of them. And sure enough, I was pleased to see that they are, in fact, different. You go across the sound, and the wind speed and directions change, and they're forecasting it just fine. So that's the data. And then from that, I made a composite just for this illustration. And you'd have to do something like this probably. So this is a composite. So inside Elliott Bay, the center sound and the west side of the sound. Now, again, you have to imagine what can happen here when you've got days with real wind. Uh, or you sailboat race uh, regardless of what the wind is. So if you have a weird time like this where there's not much wind, maybe this is even more important. But anyway, here's the issue. What's going on? Well, first of all, we see as a function, we have the time. So this, this time, this point here, 18, is 18 hours after 5 a.m. on 8.6. So that's the way you read the time scale. That's all tied to when you initialize the computation. Then you have two things, a wind speed, and so the wind speed builds during the day, a little hiccup here, builds up like that, and then so on. So that's the wind speed, and this is the wind, as a wind speed over here, and this is knots, unfortunately, it's knots, it's not, uh, not meters per second, that'd be nicer, but it's knots. So it looks like we got a big gusty four knots of wind out there. Actually, turned out to be a little bit more than that, but not uh, anyway. That's not that's not important now. Um, so there's the data, but the main thing is it shows a difference between the inside Elliott Bay, the center of the sound, and the west side of the sound. So you see, and so then you can look at the wind speeds at a particular time. Let's say you're racing at about five or five o'clock. That would be five o'clock here. So 5 o'clock, let's just say it's 5 o'clock or so 5 o'clock. So that's here. So you see the wind in, uh, in, in the west side, over on the west side, over by Bainbridge Island, that's like twice what the wind is. Oh, no, no, that's wrong. The scale's wrong. This is 5 knots. Oh, so those are actually, this is, uh, I had it backwards. This is about 4. They, they change the scale here. You have to look at that. And, and then there's wind. So the wind speed's actually not changing that much. But we don't know what this looks like on a real day when there's, when there's some kind of firm wind. But look, here's what this means. This is the wind direction over here. So here we start. We have like 315. So this wind on this line here is out of the northwest. This is a really crude scale here. We might do a lot better. I'll explain what I'm going to do next. But we might do a lot better in a different way. But looking at this, here we've got the wind at 315 northwest or so, and it's veering. It's veering around to the right, and here it's almost north, and then here's where it looks like a huge change, but that's no change at all. It's just veering. So it's it's got a 315, it's up to 360. Now it says 0, 360, and it keeps on veering. So it's veering up to this hour right here, and then it starts backing. And then it backs back down, veers, backs. So that's the way you interpret this. Now, I haven't studied this, but I, only so far as to see that it's different. The wind direction and the wind speed at different sides of the sound, you can pull out here and use this as a way to... Um, evaluate uh, the local weather forecast with a wharf model. 
And uh, that's the main thing I wanted to say here. Now, the next step will be to take, uh, take the high-resolution models from the uh, CONUS, NDFD CONUS, and the only way I know to get a mediogram out of that is do I download those data, get them either, there's a, there's a link on, we made a link, I made a link that shows how to get that data. Or you can get it with a Mac on LuckGrib and then export it. But the main thing is we have to then take that data and load it into uh, Expedition. And Expedition will allow us to create a mediogram of the data at any point. So the next step in this exercise will be to do the same thing with high resolution regional models and then look at the mediogram inside of Expedition. And that's forthcoming.